there's a story that I think is worth telling uh, as to how I made my decision to go into theater. We flew one mission in August of 44. That was maybe July of 44. It was different. We were flying by three ship elements, not a, a whole group flying together, but each three ship element had separate targets, flying relatively low level for B-24s. Uh, we were bombing bridges and highway bridges and crossroads and marshaling yards and anything that we could, could target to impede the German reinforcements from coming up against Patton, who was just getting ready to break out of the uh, Saint Lo and out of the Falaise Gap to start his uh, charge across France. That morning, I had breakfast with a bombardier of another crew, whom I did not really know. Matter of fact, I didn't really know his name. A boy from Texas. And we were sitting across from each other, eating our spam and uh, powdered milk and powdered eggs and all the rest of that good stuff. And we got to talking, what do you want to do after the war is over, if we survive this war? And he said, I think I'd like to be a poet. I said, I think that's fascinating. He said, what do you want to do? I said, well, I don't know. I like theater best. I really would like to do that, but I just don't know whether I can. He said, well, we got to talk some more. At briefing, I saw where his plane was. It was in the three ship element just ahead of ours. He was the right wing man. And as we were coming up to our approach point, the initial point before we started our bomb run, my co-pilot was flying, because I always let him fly up to the initial point, and then I took over and flew the bomb run. And I was watching the three ships go over the target ahead of me, through the flak, and I suddenly saw his plane get hit. And I didn't see any shoots. Finally, the plane blew up. And as I took over the bomb run, I know that I said to myself at that time, damn, life is short, and I'm going to do what I want to do with it if I survive this. And I know I made my decision right there to, to try to go into theater. And do you remember that uh, unfortunate man's name? I found out later, Rufus Burns. And you know, coincidentally, two years ago, I was, made a speech at the Second Air Division reunion dinner down at El Toro Marine Base, and I was telling that story. And somebody came up to me afterward and said, no, you're wrong. Two men got out of that plane, the co-pilot and one of the gunners. I said, well, I didn't see any shoots. He said, I know the co-pilot very well. Uh, and yes, uh, he was on Rufus Burns' crew. He said, I'm going to tell him what you said. I said, well, I thank you very much. Last year, I was the master of ceremonies at that dinner, and a man came up to me. He was the co-pilot. who lived somewhere off in central California and had come all the way to El Toro to meet me. And he brought with him an 8 by 10 blow-up of the crew. And I looked at the picture and I said, yes, that's Rufus Burns right there. Tall man with a little black mustache. One of the four officers in the back, six enlisted men in the front type pictures. And he gave it to me and I have that picture of Rufus Burns. Who never got to be a poet. Who never got to be a poet. <laughs>